what's up? This is Jeff, you know, BT's Rap City, and I'm shouting out Neo Soul. If you don't know, now you know. It's spoken word, it's hip hop without the music, it's people breaking it down, it's them using intellect, it's powerful. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. Neo Soul, I'm out. Hey, Atlanta, what's Neo up? Soul, yes. Neo hey, Soul, hello. Hello, Neo Soul in Atlanta, one of my favorite cities. Neo Soul. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox, and you are watching Neo Soul. Hi, I'm Elise Neal. I'm on Neo Soul, and now you are on Neo Soul. <laughs> what's up, Atlanta? This is Monique, and you're watching Neo Soul with my girl Knight. Hello, Atlanta. Neo Soul. Thank you so much. What's up, y'all? Sana Lathan. What's up? This is Simon, baby. You checking out Neo Soul? You know how we do. Hey, I'm Tashina Arnold. You're watching Neo Soul. Hi, Neo Soul, Atlanta. Neo Soul, number one in Georgia. Right, Neo Soul. What's up? This is Tom Joyner, the hardest working man in radio. Neo Soul, or everybody that is checking out Neo Soul, keep watching my man here. Keep logging on and tuning in because it is all about our perspective. I'm Kevin Frazier and you're watching Neo Soul. Keep watching y'all, don't change, don't change. Put down your remote control, you are now watching Neo Soul. What's up, Neo Soul fam? This is your boy Raheem, and you're watching us live by way of PTV and also by the internet. We want to thank y'all for letting us tune in and coming to your home. Tonight we got a great lineup for you. We're going to be exploring what's on the minds of our talent. And right now I'm chilling out with my man Big Ja. What's up? Big Ty, what's up, man? How you doing, Raheem? Big Ty, I'm sorry. What's going on, man? Ah, uh, man, everything is good, man. Good. Welcome to the Neo Soul Show. I'm glad to be here tonight. Man. That's what's up. So, so what's good with you with Big Ty? Big Ty is here to promote the Producer Swap Me, which is the premier producer networking event in Atlanta. We've been doing it for about five years. Our highlight is an actual beat battle. We like to say that we brand the next platinum producers. It's th tomorrow night. It's every last Thursday, so tomorrow night at Apache Cafe. We're also introducing a new segment called the A&R Listening Party, where we allow artists to play music for A&Rs. And tomorrow we'll have So So Deaf in the building, the A&R Surge, so um, artists can play their records and get feedback from um, the A&R. So you basically do pretty much what we do here at Neo Zone. Pretty much, man. Yeah, so this is connect the dots and all for a platform for uh, you know artists. Awesome. People, yeah. Awesome. Big time, everybody. He doing like we do it here at Neo Soul, but stars are turning into superstars. Yeah. Well, let me just let the people know if you want, if any artists out there, we take rappers or singers. Um, if you want to get down with the ANR LP, please go to the ncrowd.com. That's www.theencrowd.com, and you can uh, sign up for the ANR listening party. Let So So Def uh, check out your records. And the producer swap meet again is at the Apache Cafe. Tomorrow night is at uh, 64 3rd Street, downtown Atlanta, Georgia, right behind the varsity. Oh, they're gonna have y'all gonna have some free food or something, because you know you wanna get black people out, you gotta have uh, some food. <laughs> we, the food is not free, but it's very, very good. The kitchen, mm -hmm. there's exquisite. Apache Cafe is a legendary uh, spot for Neo Soul and all types of music in Atlanta. That's where you wanna break and come out and make yourself known to the Atlanta world, you gotta go through the Apache Cafe at least once. We call it cherry picking, and I think we might just have a little bit of that line for y'all tonight as well. So, um, Big Ty, you gonna do something for us, and then you gonna give us some type of performance? Ah, uh, man. <laughs> come on, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but on the spot, man. I'm, I'm behind the scenes. The word man. of God said, be I, all so I, ready, so you gotta be yeah. ready in your craft at all times. <laughs> my mouth and my mind is my talent right now, man, so I just, displayed it so you know 
Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So <laughs> you write a lot of your own stuff as well? Nah, I'm I'm behind the scenes, man. I'm okay. not. I work with producers and I assist producers. Okay. You know, but um, I let the producers and the artists do their thing. So I'm sort of the assistant. I help groom them and provide opportunities for them. Awesome. awesome. And also, I give out my number too for anybody that uh, wants more information. It's six seven eight. Six nine eight five seven seven eight again six seven eight six nine eight five seven seven eight. Call me for more information about the producer swap me and the A and R listener party going down tomorrow, uh, January 29th at the Apache Cafe. Now that's your cell phone number, right? That's my cell. So wait to call me. Wait till you see me go off screen, and then you can call me. Well, now, um, are you single? Are you married now? What are you doing? I'm, ma- now? I'm married. Oh, you married. married. So, y'all, ladies, because I know this is 678 for some reason in, in Georgia, in Atlanta, <laughs> the 678 symbolizes <laughs> cell phones. It's not always true, but yeah. most cell phones are 678. So, yeah. I just wanted to, to put that disclaimer in there. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, he's married, so better luck next time. Okay? So, you know, have you ever heard of a guy named Kevin What's up? I have, man. You have actually heard of him? I've heard of him, well, man. He's here tonight. Is he? Yeah. I, I think I've seen him out in the uh, in the green room. In right? the green room, okay. yes. Yeah, he's he's, he's um, doing his thing, so he's gonna come up. I hope you stick around and watch the show. Oh, no and, doubt. And um, basically, just kind of see how he does it. All, All right. right. Hopefully, y'all guys get networked. No doubt. Neo Soul, everybody. This is what networking is all about. This is my man, Big Todd. Big Todd, thank you for coming out and hanging out. Uh, thank you for having me. Most definitely. Restaurant, which is Ludacris Restaurant in downtown Atlanta, and I'm here with the very handsome Shorty Lo. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I just had a couple of quick questions for you. Okay. It's hard to get you, cause Johnny had you busy, don't he? Yeah, ever run. <laughs> okay. Um, congratulations, first off, on your award from MTV. What, could you tell me the name of it again? It was the the Rook of the Year for, for BT uh, Hip Hop. Oh, it was BT. Excuse me. It was BT. Yes. Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year. Yeah. How did you feel about winning the award? It felt great, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, when they called my name, it was like, it was a bigger compliment, so, so I worked very hard. Tell me, if you weren't in the rap business, do you have anything else that you're passionate about? Well, you know, I'm a hustler, so, you know, I, 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 I really don't, but, you know, I just, you know, whatever helped me to get where I'm at, I try to be the best at what I do. Okay. And what do you like to do in your spare time? Well, basically, my spare time, I like to be with my family because I be on the road a lot, and I like to uh, uh, enjoy and spend time with my family. Okay. And if it was an, a business that you can open now, what would it be? Well, right now, I would say real estate. You know what yeah. Saying? Real estate for real? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and uh, who's one of your favorite artists? Uh, Jay-Z got to be, Jay-Z and Lil Wayne, my favorite artist. Really? Okay, what female do you like? Female, uh, Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim? Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. All right. All right, I'm here kicking it with Neo Soul, and I came to uh, celebrate with my boy Rocco and Monica for his birthday. Shots out to my big homie Rocco. Y'all already know what time it is. Your boy Young Ralph, aka the Jewel Man. The whole money making rock a hit out the hit and win the bill. And Rocco, you been my partner. Shots out, number love. Keep doing your thing, homie. Number of respect. What's up, it's Girl Princess, A Town's finest representing. You already know what's going down real big. Happy holidays to everyone. Happy birthday, Rocco. Uh, Monica invited me out, you know. Southern chicks gotta stick together. Mixtape and album coming real soon. Mwah. Keep God first, keep it humble. Stay blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This your boy P Troy. And I'm representing for that Neo Soul. What's going down, baby? And the song. Hey, this is your girl D Woods, and you're listening to Neo Soul. It's your girl Siobhan representing from BET's College Hill Atlanta season five. And we're in Atlanta at Straits Restaurant for Rocco's birthday and a holiday celebration for all the Atlanta people. We're just having a good time out here. So happy birthday, Rocco. Shout out to Neo Soul. I love y'all. Hey, you guys, we're still here at Straits Restaurant where Rocco is having his surprise birthday party given by Monica. Here's the invitation, which is very cute. Like a leather suede invitation that I got in the mail. And then a picture of him is in the inside. Very nice, very nice. So a lot of people came out, like Derek Blank, celebrity photographer, Tiny, um, um, Tiny is T.I.'s girlfriend is here. Rocco, Monica, of course. Little Chris is downstairs in the kitchen. Can you believe that? 
A lot of people came out. It's other people are starting to come up. It's mobbed in here, but we want to wish him a happy birthday. He's a very nice guy, doing great things. Shorty Low stopped by too. And you know, he just won an award at um, BET, so the shout outs to him. Uh, Johnny, his manager, which I know, it was at his house for Christmas. We all, I know so many people here. It's good to have good karma in Atlanta because everybody know everybody. And I want to give a shout out to Tracy Cruz of Neo Soul for letting me co host her show today with Talking with Tammy. So, you guys, we're going to still. Oh, okay. She wants me to talk about the cake. The cake right here is hot to death. Rocco's cake. We wish him a lot of luck. Von Steven, CEO of Upfront Convict Live here at my man's Rocco Celebration of Life. Just want to send a big shout out, big happy birthday to my man Rocco. Been coming from a long time, from the floors to the big doors, baby. Let's go. Let's get it. Holla. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now tuning in to the greatest of all time. I am Jazzy Fenzel, Washington Zell, Obama in the building. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing a real big uh, monstrous magnet Sasquatch pimping. Shouts out to my man Rocco. You know what I'm talking about? We go way, way back before the records and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Monica. Shouts out to all the kids. You know what I'm saying? It's real big, man. It's Christmas time. We in straight. Shout out to Luda. We do it real big, man. Fenzel, Washington Zell. Fenzel Burgundy album coming real soon. Micah Keo coming real soon. Uh, we doing it real big, man. Divine Stevens 007 is in the building. You know what I'm saying? We're doing it like that. Oh boy! Atlanta, stay tuned for season two. And right now I'm working on my clothing line, She by Charade, slated for a fall 2009 launch. And I'm really excited about it. And tonight I am here at Straits, Ludacris' restaurant. Come out to support Monica and Ludacris. And I'm going to fall. Hi, we're back here at the Straits restaurant for Rocco's birthday party, and we're here with Mayor Vernon Jones. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Let me tell you, this is the place to be. Oh, I know nice. it's Rocco's birthday, but this restaurant is nice. The company, the friends and family here, certainly we're here to celebrate Rocco's birthday. Cool, smooth brother, and certainly Monica. We can't forget about Monica, because, you know, that's, that, that's the team there. But I, I am here, you know, the government need to be represented. So you right. know, I'm here to represent the government. Hey, we're back with more Neil Soul and talking with Tammy, and I'm here with the birthday guy, which is Rocco. Hello. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Was you surprised? Most definitely. Most <laughs> definitely I was, man. You know, I wasn't expecting this, man. It's all my people, all my loved ones. So, you know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Most definitely. And how old are you today? I'm, <laughs> I'm the new 20s. The new 20s, all right. <laughs> and what did you want for your birthday? Really, I just wanted something like this just to be around all my people, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's like, you know, it's a beautiful thing, you know, when everybody come together, you know what I'm saying, and just, you know what I mean? So this right here, this is the best gift I could have I possibly got right now. All right, well, congratulations and many more, okay? Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Hi, Miss Monica. Hey, how you doing? How you did a good job of surprising him. He didn't know anything. Yeah, I was shocked because, you know, the city kind of talks a lot, but people knew it was a surprise, and he's a hard worker, and, um, you know, people don't get to hear a lot about rappers outside of what they do and what they say in their lyrics. It's a total, totally different thing at the house. So everybody just came out to show him some love and have fun. We're just going to eat and have a good time. Well, you look fabulous as usual. I love that coat. Thank you. You always stylish. I know. My son say, Mama, it's nice. It's a nice jacket. <laughs> He like anything where I'm covered up. <laughs> and what did you get him? No, this. It's a this lot more to come. This is just the beginning. Oh, all right. Well, you guys stay tuned with more Neo Soul and talking with Tammy. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Yeah, what's good, man? It's your boy Rocco. You know what I'm saying? Neo Soul, what's up? Shout out to Neo Soul. I see you on behalf of Rocco live from the birthday bash. My birthday bash, that is. What's up, Neo Soul? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So now you see how we do it. This is how we do it in the street. That was at Rocco's party. Rocco, happy birthday again, man. I know you still celebrate. Because I'm still celebrating mine, too, from last week. It's going to be going on for the rest of the year. <laughs> but anyway, you all see how we do it in the streets. So and now we're going to bring it back to the studio. We're doing big things here at Neo Soul. So I'm chilling with my man, Ellis Ford. Yes, yes. Arthur, life coach. Doing big things. What's yes, up, man? Yeah. Welcome to Neo Soul. Glad to be here, man. Yeah. So um, I got your book. I was just reading through it. And um, one comment, I'm, I'm just going to read this comment. It says, when you anticipate good for the future, you create power for the present. 
that's the Austin State for man. Um, and it's a book that me and my twin put together. The title is called. It's Over. two of you guys. Yes, it's two Uh-oh. of us. Double drop. That's right. That's right. The title is called Overflowing with Hope. And of course, the subtitle is How Anticipating Good Can you get a shot of this book? Empowers you. And then when you're anticipating good for the future, it creates power for the present. It allows you to give you something to hold on to. Don't let go because I'm embracing what's to come rather than focusing on what, where I'm at right now. Okay. You know, you sound like another bump. Listen at you. Listen yeah, at you. Yeah, what's listen up with that? that? You, you trying to... Uh, you, you, you plotting on the brothers uh, seat in the White House already? No, no. I just want to encourage my people, tell them to hold on, continue to focus on what's to come. Because when you're able to do that, I can't give up. I'm celebrating rather than tolerating. I'm communicating more happiness rather than unhappiness. I'm focusing on, what, on what's to come rather than where I'm at right now. So I can embrace where I'm at, knowing that this is not my final destination and the best is still yet to come. Sharp, brother. Almost sharper than me. Sharp, brother. But um, tell us how you got started on this book. Well, me and my twin decided to come together uh, about a year plus ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just we was running across a lot of people who, who needed encouragement. So we decided to come together and want to encourage our people and let them know that there is no hopeless situation, only people in situation without hope. So that's why we decided to come together and just want to impact lives and to encourage people, don't be hopeless, but be hopefulness. It's meaning that I'm not going to focus in on where I, what I see because really life is what you how you see it and hope helps you forever see the brighter side. That's deep, man. So keep holding on. Keep holding that's on. That's deep right there. You're going to preach for us. Listen, listen at you. Listen at you. Listen at you. I know you're going to have to. Come on. Oh, Lord. No, no. Just Don't throw in your holy tower. Listen at you, man. Listen at you. Listen at you. Put your pocketbooks on the listen table. At you, man. Dig deep. Nah, 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 nah. This one let my people. We don't want the guy in the folk with the guy in the jingle. We want the guy in the folk. Listen at you, man. Listen at you. Listen at you, now. But that's deep, though. No, nah, I just want to, like I said, we just want to encourage our people, no matter where you are, no matter what you see. Yes, this the two the, this two shall pass. Wherever you see right now, if you don't see where you really want to be, it'll pass. But keep focusing on what's to come. So once you focus on what's to come, it gives me something to hold on to, you know? So that means I'm not going to let go. A- absolutely. You know, I think um, on, a, on a bigger picture, not just doing us as black folk, but doing the whole, not the whole, the whole world. You okay. understand what I'm saying? Okay. Because what happens in America, we, we barter, we trade, we import, we export. And we, you know, we, we do these things with other countries. We have to live... Um, Harmoniously okay. with other co- other countries, right? You know what I'm saying, right? So I mean, it's like when Obama won the 44th presidency of the United States. Okay, and we talk about oh, we got a black president now. You know what I'm saying, right? But what we really have is a new era of responsibility, not just a. Bu- that means we got to step up our game. That's it. You see what that's I'm saying? It. And see, that's what happened when you overflow with hope. You're able to embrace new possibilities. When did you write this book? Like I said, over a year ago. We just released it January the 1st, though. We just released it January the 1st. And uh, actually, you can actually get the book, uh, overflowingwithhope.com. That's the actual website. And we're going through the process of uh, actually getting it in the stores right now. So. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So right now, they have to go to the website, yeah, the uh, website and order it. Overflowingwithhope.com. Well, let me ask you this question now. Because freedom ain't free. And I think that, you know, I read a little bit, a few excerpts in this book. And, and knowledge is power. That's it. Does it come with free posters and shipping to him? It comes with, it comes with um, no free posters. No free. Folks, ain't nothing free, but this book is dynamic. It's awesome. And this is Dr. Twin is Dr. Dr. Your twin is Dr. E.W. Ford. And you're Ellis Ford. And I'm Ellis Ford. Well, if you talk this sharp, and he and you're not the doctor. That's right. Man, we're gonna have to get him in there. Okay. Hey, uh, Doctor E. W. Ford. What is, what is E stand for? Elliot. Elliot and Ellis. That's it. Twins, y'all. You man? Single. Single, y'all. No ring. No ring. They got on a bad coat and a bad set of alligator shoes listen at you, too. Man. Listen at you. Listen at you. Listen at you. In <laughs> my size. Listen at you. Listen at you. So man. so you know on a serious note because I know we we don't have much time. How do you spend your, your days, your time in, in, in Georgia? And what is your, your your overall destiny for yourself, not just for the people? Well, I, I'm a believer, first of all, so therefore I have to actually empower myself, you know, with the word of God. So that's that's how I'm able to be hopeful. So but really it depends on where you are in your life. If you a person who's not there, you're a non believer, you can hold on to possibilities. And if you're a believer, you hold on to the promise of God. 
So therefore, wherever you find yourself in life, you can continue to hold on, you keep pressing forward, you can keep going after it. Whatever caused you not to quit, keep pressing forward because still the best is still yet to come. You need to look in that camera and tell those people that because what you're saying is, is some dynamic stuff, you know. This is a new beginning again, a an era of new a new era of responsibility. Yes, it's yes. time to step up. It's time to step up and keep holding on. I don't care what you see. I don't care how you you feel. Keep holding on because where you are is not your final destination. Keep pressing forward, anticipating good. And when you're able to anticipate good, it helps you enjoy your day, your week, your life, your mate. No matter what's going on, still the best is still yet to come. So focusing on what is right rather than focusing on what's not right. And then when you're able to do that, I can enjoy where I'm at. I can embrace a new day. So I'm not focusing on what, what's going on today because I know still tomorrow is yet to come. So therefore, I can embrace new possibility on tomorrow. So that's why I will not give up. 30 seconds. To our people and to our young brothers, looking into the camera, and I want you to say something from the heart to them about our responsibility. Our responsibility is... Keep pressing forward. Keep going after whatever's caused you not to give up. Keep going after it because still the best is still yet to come. The responsibility of the entertainment industry. That's what we're going to be talking about. And we want you to stay tuned. We want you to stay tuned and be prepared to just sort of interact, interact in your own way with your opinion. Because we want, what we want to do is that we want to throw out a power ball. We want to throw out a power ball and let you guys at home think about the responsibility of the entertainment industry and how that's going to tie in with what we're talking about today. Again, I'm Raheem, and you're watching Neo Soul Spoken Word Variety Soul. Show. What's up, Neo Soul? This is Raheem, and I'm here with Miss D Woods. What's up, D? What's up? Looking all gorgeous and whatnot. Thank you. You're welcome. Why is it important that we meet for these types of gatherings? It's really good to meet for these types of gatherings because you want to make sure that the community is getting the information so that we know what to do, you know, bringing up the, the college generation, that, that age group, because, you know, we are like the future and we don't know what we're doing with our money. There's a lot of people out there making mistakes. They don't know where to get the information, but we have, you know, these types of, you know, gatherings so that they can get the information, they can hear from the horse's mouth, also get the booklet and read it on their own or also hear about other sources where they can get information. What is the purpose of this Hip Hop Summit? This is the Financial Empowerment Summit. Right. It is important to operate from a place of abundance. I mean, I always hear, yo, son, I'm starving. And then I look at the person who's like generally overweight, right? <laughs> and, you know, and the person who says that, you know, who operates from, you know, I'm starving, is probably uh, gets up late. You know, I, there's a lot, there's a lot of, it takes a lot of discipline, you know, and then discipline makes you happy when you, when you work from it, you know, and it kind of moves you closer to that. That thing, there is a piece of, uh, that the secret is based on uh, what's inside you. There's a piece of God inside you. And you might not like to worry, but there's this higher self this, that you operate from, and it's attractive, it brings money to you, and other things, you know. It, so, you know, you have this cycle of giving. If you're free enough to keep giving, you'll keep getting, you know. That's the thing. Great givers are, are, are amazing getters, you know, so that's what it's about. So be a servant. Don't worry, you're not going to starve. If you don't have cable, your friend will have it. <laughs> it's real important, you know, like, don't be so, you know, that way you don't go out there like people, I had to go get money, I had to hustle, or, for what, you know, you really have everything you need. If you operate from that space, that you have everything you need, you'll have enough courage to pick this book up, you'll have enough courage to be a good servant, and a good servant is a great leader, so that's what it is, so have faith in yourself. Hey, this is Reverend Doctor, the Reverend Doctor Ben Shavers. What's up, Doc? Hey, man, I'm here in the ATL. We're kicking it. We just had a great hip hop summit on financial empowerment. Get your money right. So please always see you, Doctor Shavers. Why do you think it's important to have these types of events? Well, it shows that our young people have a hunger and thirst for information. You know, I, I think sometimes the forces that live in a society they try to push our people down. This is about raising our people up, giving them the right information. And that's why I'm optimistic. I think this is the best generation of young people we've ever been blessed to witness. They just need the proper information, the proper encouragement, and the proper motivation. Having said that, where do you see this event taking our people in the next five to ten years? Oh, well, you know, to the extent to which we can get our money right, then we can start reinvesting in our community, economic development in our community, strengthening our families, strengthening our businesses, and then we're on, man. Re uh, Reverend Ben Shavers, real quick, I know you got to go, but one more quick question. Next year, where do you see your venue being handled? 
Well, we'll, we'll be right back here. We're going. We're not every year. We're coming back to Atlanta. Now, this is a great city. You know, we're going to be getting our vote right, getting our house right, and getting our money right. There's one thing that every person on this panel shares. It's not that we wealthy. It's not that we make money. Because some of us got money but still broke. Okay? It's not that. The one thing that everybody on this panel shares is we love what the hell we do. We love what we do. See, the difference is when you work and you just working to make money, you're going to be the most unhappy, bitter person that lived and walked on the planet. But when you are working and doing what you love to do, you will find that money starts chasing your ass. And you're going to say, damn, money, leave me alone. I got enough. You'll find that the happiest people in the world, they might not be the richest, but they doing what Kevin said. They enjoying life. They live in life. They passionate. They're spiritual. They've got it all together. You know what? Don't just do something because you think you're going to make money. Find out what God put you here for. Find something you love to do. It might be the craziest idea in the world. Because everybody up here who, who invented something, somebody thought they was crazy at one time. Do what you love to do, and that money will chase you, baby. What's up, Neo Soul TV? It's D Woods. Mwah. This is Dr. Ben giving a shout out to Neo Soul. If you want to know what's going on in the world of soul, particularly Neo Soul, check out this station. That was the Hip Hop Summit. In 2008, Russell Simmons keep on doing big things, man. Luda, D Woods, I take my hat off to all y'all. Frank Ski, this guy, is, he's, so he's so powerful and positive, and I just love to hear him talk. I just about thought he was going to give a uh, morning vitamin or uh, late, <laughs> late afternoon vitamin. Frank Ski, I respect you. I take my hat off to you. I, I consider you something like a mentor. Keep doing the things you're doing, man. And I'm sitting here right now with K. What's up? What's up? Right? You said it what's right. What's up? Like, what's up? 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 Pros production of it right now. Okay. Been doing some commentary for the Jamie Foxx show. The guy always blowing up the spot on Jamie Foxx on Fridays. Blowing it up every day there. Also got a show I call The Cutting Edge. Hot. We talk about everything. And that, we don't we ain't scared of nothing. That cutting edge. That's like uh, that's that's a talk show type talk forum. We tour around the country. It's a talk show, it's advice. We say relationships in every city. We say relationships, advice from a straight guy, a gay guy, and a girl, and we holding it down. Yeah, I remember y'all did it, that one uh, thing. I think it was a TV one. I'm not on TV uh, one. I was on Black yeah. Maryville. Woo! Oh yeah, I had the opportunity to um, actually be a part of that, and so um, I haven't had the opportunity to see it yet. But I, I had to hide. I, I'm gonna blow my own horn because I gotta get mine on. I had the highest rated show in the history of Black Man Reveal and the third highest rated show on TV One for the last two years. It was about the secret sound. And I talked about things people didn't want to talk about. Like what? I talked about the downloads. Uh-oh, the download. The download the download, the download brothers. Download it's, it's a lot of, it's Atlanta's full of downloads. Okay. Download brothers, sisters, everything. The mamas and daddies. I said it. I said it. We know oh. what my motto is. Why son said it. Now what? Now what? Show up. So if you don't, if you're on the download, then that's low down. So I think it's low down, but you know what? My problem is I don't care what you do. Just be honest on how you're doing it. Right, right. So just being the reality of it. You know what? The reality of it is always be fair to the person you're involved with. You ain't got to put your well, you business be fair on front street. First, right? Not really. You can lie to yourself, <laughs> but just <laughs> don't lie to me. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. If you if you're engaging in a relationship with someone then obviously you want them to know about your past and what you bring to the table. You know Where what? You've been, so, I don't so think everybody's speak. past is everybody's business, but I do think that when you're in a relationship, you need to make sure that you're not but on one side of the fence at that point. Kevin Wasson, everybody. This guy is a personality, talented manager, writer, radio and TV. I'm well, doing it all. We're going to talk more about these types of things because we're going to bring on a couple of sharp brothers and we're going to go in and we're going to roll up our sleeves and we're going we're gonna to get, we're gonna get with it. Let's get it going. Let's That's get it popping. That's what's up. So you got all these things going on, uh, New York, California, all this Jamie Foxx stuff, all this stuff going on. What about young people that aspire to become 
uh, a member of the entertainer want to act or whatever. What on you a got, serious what note, I tell them, got? first of all, go to school. Ignorance is not what's happening. Say that again. Ignorance is not what's happening. Crazy Learn man. some things before you try to get out here and do some things. Listen to your parents. Now, if your parents ain't got a whole lot of knowledge, don't listen to them. Be able to read a script. Be able. If you, you know what I always tell people, if you get ready, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Because when you go out to Hollywood to audition, they only give you one shot. And then they put your name on the list and say, don't bring them back in again. If you want to become a TV producer, go somewhere and learn how to produce first. If you want to be a movie actor, go study acting. If you want to be a rapper, learn from the best. Go listen to some real rappers. You can't listen to little Mama and think, oh, that's the queen of the rappers. Go listen to somebody that can flow, a Queen Latifah, Lil' Kim. Go listen to a T.I. or a Tupac or a Biggie. Don't go listen to Young Gully, whoever they are, talking about, oh, he can rap because he go, yah, yah, yah. That ain't rap. Well, what about the business aspects of it? I mean, I mean, a lot of people can rap, sing, dance, all these things. But, I mean, hell, you can go to college and get a degree. But if you don't know how to go out, articulate yourself, and, and properly represent yourself, then you can't get the job or you can't get that, that financial See, degree. a lot of people get it confused. It's called show business. Understand one thing. Business is a longer word than show. So, see, show is the short part of it. The business what makes it work. If you don't know the business, you won't be in the show very long. This guy is deep. Kevin, you got a website. I'm overflowing with hope. Email. <laughs> that was a sharp brother. Oh, Ellis got it going on. I read the book. I'm overflowing with hope. I hope to get some more money. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you got an email. I mean, I, I think you might have said it before, but said you got an email. It's Kevin, K-E-V-I-N, comedy, C-O-M-E-D-Y, at MSN.com. Show up, call me up. Kevin Wasson. Wasson. And we're going to check out the ABFF, the Atlanta that land, I'm sorry, the American Black Film Festival in California. And this is gonna be with night. So I want you to kick back, relax, enjoy that. Uh, we've been doing this thing for years now. I think that it's gonna be in uh, Miami this year. I, I've been, been to be a there? couple, I've been to a couple of them. It was good. I saw some people that shouldn't be there no more. I know that. Playing a major part in African American film. Because I know you went from an actress, but now you're just so much more. Each one needs to teach one. And I am a total fan and a believer of that. And, and actually knowing that I have been helped through the ABFF and I was a supporter, even when the festival was in Acapulco, right. even when the festival was in Miami, now that it's here in LA, and now that it's going to Turks and Caicos, I am the, the middle person, I am the point person, I am the infusion of the American system and the British system, being the first lady of Turks and Caicos. So it only makes it right for me to wear that, that, that description of Minister of Education and Minister of, of, of Entertainment, because I am an actress, and then, you know, me not stopping what it is that I have worked so hard for during the years of building the image and the brand of Lisa Ray, that can only help the awareness of my newfound country that I call home now. So it is important that we tell our stories because our stories are, are, are important. Our voices need to be heard and it's people that, like Jeff Friday from the ABFFF, that helps people that say, you know what? This is a foundation. This is a plateau for you to be able to showcase your talents and walk away with relationships that you make, that you're able to walk up to people, the same people that you see on TV, the same people that support you, the same people that saying, I'm here to help you. You can walk up to them, touch them and say, hey, let's do business. I have something, I'm here, the same reason why you're here. Do you plan to write or direct anything since you now have a major part in just what people see? and then you illuminate so many images. Are you going to be writing any movies or doing any plays or any scripts or anything like that? Right now I'm currently doing a play called Gossip, Lies and Secrets and coming off the sitcom market from doing our show for four years right. and being syndicated. Um, <laughs> That's big. Yes, it is yeah. after four years. Yeah. Um, I, I needed to get those other little voices out of me. So the theater for me is a different tool of learning because it's not movies, right. it's not sitcom, it's not take two, take three, it's take one and you have to get it right the first time. So that broadens your horizons and polish up your chops. So as far as writing and stepping from in front of the camera, of course, absolutely, because I'm learning as well and that's why I'm here, to see and to make a difference in making films for our people and let our voices be heard. How you doing, Angelina? I'm doing fine, thank you. Now, uh, where are you from? I'm from uh, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. 
And what is your purpose of being here? I'm here um, to meet people in the business, in the movie business. There's not much going on for people of color in Europe, in the film industry. And, um, you know, I've been thinking, thinking about coming to the festival for many years, but I was intimidated. And I finally decided to come, you know, to meet, to meet the people in the independent film industry. You know. And uh, you're kind of familiar with Neil So? Yeah, um, I actually saw you on YouTube. Yeah, uh, you did an interview with some actors, and you know, I thought that was really cool. That was really nice. Yeah, that was actually one of the reasons why I got mo that I got motivated to come. You know, because um, when I saw your interviews, then I realized that you know you can meet everybody here. That's really you know active in the business. So we got to meet you. Excuse me? And then we got to meet you, a budding actor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm here for the Actors Boot Camp. It's being given by um, Bill Duke. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. You're you know. in good hands. Yeah, that's actually the main reason why I came here. What's up, Neil? So you know this is night. We are in L.A. and I'm hanging out with Red Billa. And he is going to tell us about what he got going on real quick. How you feeling right now? feeling good. I'm enjoying the LA West Coast, you know, at the Black Film Festival. It's my second year. And it's crazy down here. It's good. You know what I'm saying? It's grinding, staying on the grind. You know, just being 30 weight gravy. That's what it's about. So what you grinding on? Uh, first of all, I'm CEO of my rap label, which is 30 weight gravy records, and I'm out of Chicago. And uh, I got a couple songs on uh, the Wire soundtrack on HBO. Be looking out for that. And the album's in store. It's called Rebellious. Uh, it's my third album. So just working and just making it happen, you know. Just grinding and getting on a national level. And uh, please check out my MySpace, which is www.myspace slash RedBilla, R-E-D-B-I-L-L-A. What's up, Neil? So this is Night Spoken Word Variety Show, and we are hanging out in L.A., and we are hanging out with one of the most popular gentlemen right now. <laughs> How you feeling right now, Lamont? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? I'm doing really good. Good. You look great. You too, as how, always. How you feeling? I'm chilling. You know, a little hot, but okay. it's LA. This Can't is a, yeah, complain. This That's 94 right. degrees That's right, right now. And you just raised my temperature. Well, see, some there more, you so go. I'm Flattery will get you everywhere. Hey, where are you trying to go? <laughs> <laughs> Would you let the people know what's going on with you? I know you're like just the movie was fascinating. Thank you. You Thank did you very an incredible much. job. I mean, you uplifted women to the point where they like, yeah, I feel good about me. First of all, well, good. All right. Well then. I did my job, you know, and I think that's part of, uh, that was part of Troy's purpose in the film and not just in an idealistic way, but there are plenty of Troys out there. But most importantly, if you really think about it, Troy didn't really do anything. Troy was just there, you know, and he walked with her, but she had to make the decision to, uh, to take that walk for herself. And uh, I think often the misconception is that somebody's going to come along and save us or fix us. And if you really pay attention to the film, Troy didn't save her or fix her. She had to do that work herself. So I think if anything, that's the real message for men and women is to take the time to do the work that you need to do for yourself, have a relationship with yourself. And that's what's going to attract another beautiful spirit to you. That's the way we do it on Neo's soul. I let y'all like that. I thought you would. I'm chilling with a man K special. Special K. <laughs> Let's flip that. Yeah. K is special. This is K Douglas, also known as Special K. Spe uh, special K is an actor, comedian, writer. He's a composer. He does it all. And he's also on uh, 107.9 on the Ricky Smiley Show. The nationally syndicated Ricky Smiley Morning Show, Hot 107.9. Yeah, and now I'm a comedian first. I'm, I'm a comedian. I don't like to say you're a writer first. Comedian you're slash you're writer first. slash uh, actor slash radio personality in that order because I'm a comedian before I'm anything else. Okay. So. Ego, ego check. Which one are you best at? I, I didn't say I'm better, best at I comedy. Said best. See, because comedy, the comedy feeds everything else. So without the comedy, there is no writing, there is no acting, there is no radio. Comedy feeds everything else. So, okay, so you know, I'm gonna call you a blow. I'm gonna call you a blow. Say something funny. See, now I don't even work like that. Oh. You run into a yeah, dentist. Warm you, up. you run into a dentist. You don't ask them to just pull your tooth out, do you? Well, if it hurt, you know I'm like, dog, gonna take it out. But we 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 we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, we'll we'll get into it. Uh, uh, as as the conversation goes along. Okay. So you gotta, See, I don't do jokes. You gotta understand. No, you gotta understand. I don't do jokes. What I do, I do real like real life comedy. 
Mm-hmm. My comedy comes from my real, actual life. You know, I talk about my family. I talk about the wife. I talk about the kids. George I talk Bush. About current events. I talk about George Bush. Uh, George Who Bush. That? He managed to do something that forty-three white dudes prior to him didn't manage to do, which is let a black man get elected president of the United States. And you know, George Bush has got to feel pretty. His self-esteem got to be pretty low, right about now. They was forty-three and oh. <laughs> They was 43 and 0 until Bush came along. I they was like the New England Patriots, 18 and 0, losing the Super Bowl. They was 43 and 0. George Bush came along and blew it for everybody. So you know, George Bush let Obama get in there, our first black president. I like to say our first beige president, because he, ain't, you know, I mean he's black, but he's beige, and that's the only way he really got in because of how he looked. Because you know, if he looked like Samuel L. Jackson, and it just wouldn't be happening right now. So I want to make. No, no. You wouldn't have made it. No, no. You wouldn't have made it. I we might have made it. When we get a president that looked like Don Cheadle, that's when people say we got our first <laughs> black president. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I mean, but I take Obama. Because Obama, he, you know, that's my man. He cool. I like Obama. I yeah. like Obama. Yeah. I ain't mad at him. You know, gas prices went down since he been here, so I'm, I'm down with that. I would have voted for uh, 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 Osama bin Laden if he could have got gas down to $1.50 a gallon. I ain't going to lie. I would, it was whatever. Did you see when Obama came down the aisle and was meeting all the black celebrities? He he got the grill and he said, "What up, Queen?" He said, "What up, Queen?" That's the first time president said, "What up?" Hey, that's the what first time up? president said, it, "It's gonna be a whole lot of firsts." I mean, it's gonna be the first time anybody in the White House ever played spades. I mean, man like, you think Lil Kim gonna get to come to the Kennedy Center Honor, Kennedy Center Honors one day or something like that, Lil Kim? I don't see that happening. You don't. Uh, they no, ain't that black. No, they ain't that black yet. No, bro. Okay. No, bro. You think Aretha no. gonna walk around without her bra on one day, like one of them old loose t-shirts? You know what was funny about Aretha? What? When she came when she came and, Don't did say the, that and, and did the thing at the inauguration, and how they say, "Well, you know, it ain't over to the fat lady sings." <laughs> <laughs> and then it's, it's like funny how Bush was no, looking okay, come on, you once Aretha started ahead. singing, because that signified that it's truly Bush over. Bush hit it. Bush said, "Get the plane going." The fat, the fat lady is singing. Okay, she sang. Okay, but he did haul ass out of there though. I thought Bush said. It's time to yeah, hit. I've done all my work yeah, is done yeah. here. Bush, had to, Bush yeah. had to go on and raise up, man. But uh, yeah. but I, I'm I'm happy and I'm optimistic about you know Barack being in, and, and I just I feel good about I just feel good about life right now because you know I just think that uh we're gonna we're gonna do some big things. Now. Being a serious man like you are, and, and and I've heard you speak before, and I know that you're sharp. But let's talk about the work at hand. We're talking about a new beginning, an era of responsibility, and I just can't get that out of my head. Because we gotta roll up our sleeves now, we gotta bust at it. Well, black man, what gotta, you gotta say about that? Black man have Barack. What he's done, well, President Obama. What he's done, he set the bar higher for black men. Black men everywhere have to look at him and say, "Wow, this dude is 47 years old. He's the president of the United States." I know brothers 47 that still live with their mama. I know brothers 47 ain't got good enough credit to get a blockbuster card. You know what I mean? So black men really got to step our game up and get ourselves together and start to, you know, really, you know, get our grown man on. And Barack is the example for that. Now, I got a problem with what you said because I'm tired of our brothers and sisters and people going around hollering Barack and Michelle. Y'all have got too personal with them. This is the president That's what of the United States. Exactly. And she is the oh, first president. lady. She is Mrs. Yes. Obama yes. and he is Barack President Obama. Obama. Yes. Y'all act like this is peaches and herb or somebody right. that live next door to y'all or something. I get, I, look, I give them all their props. I give them all their props. President Obama, First Lady Michelle. Thank you. You know, but I mean, but they y'all still, call Daddy Ross Miss Ross, but y'all just call Michelle about me. Michelle, that's, Michelle. That's, that's, that's because uh, Michelle uh, comes. They they come off feeling like you know you know them. Okay, but step to him and see how the CIA handle you. He's the first president that had that won his campaign, that won his election based on the fact that people felt a, a personal connection to him. You know, when when he would go out and speak, you felt like you could call him Barack. You felt like you can call her Michelle because she looked like your cousin, but, and he looked like. Now, I see some of your cousins, but, but, and they don't look like, like Will but, but hold on, Kevin, Ken, 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 Ken. Listen, check this out. If a person that went to school with you, or whoever, your older sibling, if you if that's the case, and they go to medical school, and they graduate, and they get the pass the bar, and they become a doctor, we refer to them as Dr. So-and-so, right? Right. But we're talking about a little, as Mr. Brown said, on, on Meet the Brown, T9, a little teeny weeny thing, you know what I'm saying? We talking about the president of the United States, the highest position in the United States of America. And yes, he we do have the obligation of holding that handle, and we are accountable for doing that, especially as African American or Black folk or whatever you want to call yourself. Right now, though, you know what I'm loving about this country? Right now, we doing and saying things we just don't care no more. We loving the world right now. I'm overflowing with hope. The guy that was on another example. I'm. Aren't you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. You feel like you go out tomorrow and get a really good job? 
I don't need a really good job. I got a really good job. You're a comedian. I'm a comedian. Right. I'm recession proof. <laughs> right. My job, my I'm, job a, is I'm a talent care. manager. I can't get laid off. I'm a talent manager, real personality. Guess what? I got a job. I got the best job in the world because as a comedian, think about it. We don't have background checks. Ain't no dress code. You can right. show up at work drunk. Right. Now the hey, you can drunk at work, right? You can drunk at work. That's the only hey. job. You can, in the middle of your job, you can ask for a Hennessy and Coke. You're right. And get one. And don't nobody look at you crazy. But who pay the bill, though? That, does that come with the, uh, I always wonder about that. The club pay for it. The club pay for it. The club pay for it. It's all free. Drunk as I don't know what. You like to drink. Free. You like that taste. Man, I love it. Alcohol. You like that Vodka. taste. He drunk right now. Is he? Blame it on the <laughs> Remy. You heard that in song by Jamie Foxx. Vodka. Blame it. Blame it on the Remy. Chirac. You like that Henny. You like that taste. Yeah. Okay. And you got, got some in that back pocket right, right now. Okay. Whoa, I love it. If you love you it, I like it. Airplane we, we, in we, pocket right we, now. We've been talking with K. Douglas, also known as Special K. Atlanta's K. hottest Wasson, comedian. The hottest comedian in Atlanta. You better believe it. And the flyest personality you know, me. I'm yes. hollering it out. I'm spitting my own name. We're going to bring some more of this to y'all. Y'all see what these guys are just warming up. Go to my you know MySpace what page. Where, what's that? K. Douglas Comedian. K. Right. Douglas Comedian on MySpace. And now we're I ain't got room. a MySpace page, and I don't want nobody trying to find me. I make a lot of enemies every now and then. I got something to talk about when we come back. <laughs> and we're going to get live with it. Now, we can already get let's it right. Take a, let's take a break. Let's get it popping. Neo Soul, I'm right here with K. Neo Soul. Neo Soul. Neo Soul. Neo Soul. <laughs> okay, so they want us to keep on talking. So, the element of surprise has caught up with... Neo Soul, alright? So keep it low on the low living. Let's go. Hey, yo, 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 the Yin Yang Twins saying welcome to Atlanta with who? Neo Soul, like, hey! Welcome to Atlanta, Neo Soul, your boy Frank Ski. We on the red carpet, the BET Awards, first annual, and y'all are here for real. The road to success is not straight. There's a curve called failure, loops called confusion, speed bumps called friends, and red lights called enemies. Caution signs called family and flat tires called jobs. jobs but if you have a spear called determination and an engine called perseverance with insurance called fate and a drive to make it, you'll reach a place called success. Hi, Neo Soul Atlanta. I love Atlanta. I think I'm going to move here. Neo Soul number one in Georgia. Right, Neo Soul, what's up? This is Tom Joyner, the hardest working man in radio. Neo Soul family. Hey, it's Terry McMillan. Neo Soul family, you know I love you. Neo Soul, this is Hotep with Hustle University. We love you. We love you. Don't wait for opportunity. Create it for yourself. Empower Go yourself. Take it. Get it, take get it, it, get it. Hey, what's up, Neo Soul? What's up, Neo Soul? This is Rockman Dunbar. My name is D Black. Um, I'm an actor and spoken word artist. In spoken word, I go by the name D Black. My real name is David Roberts. And the name of the piece that I'm about to recite is entitled I Apologize. I apologize. I apologize for being a rapper that floods your airwaves with songs at the brave. Your kids' minds making them mental slaves. I apologize for writing rhymes about crimes never committed. Selling drugs, busting guns, prisons never been in. I apologize for promoting companies lacking respect for me. Stretching out their demographics, increasing their currency. I apologize for demeaning women when some of y'all don't deserve it. Prostituting y'all on wax is a means of making profit. I apologize for exploiting my hood when I should be explaining it. Using it as a stepping stone when I should be saving it. I apologize for giving the N-word heavy rotation. Instead of lifting the minds of the masses, I'm satisfying investors. But see, I got this A&R saying if I don't write songs like these, he ain't going to sign me. And y'all black folks is bootlegging and downloading, so what you going to boycott? Spare me. And plus I got seeds to feed and y'all ain't buying enough copies. But these white kids get a kick out of black negativity. So I sambo on tracks manifesting buffoonery. Cause these black companies can't offer what these white ones is paying me. So for an MTV crib and a chance at luxury, I close my third eye and compromise my dignity. Like y'all females dancing to my number one hit songs of misogyny. Rhythmic masochists, gyrating to degradation, souls missing something like single parent housing. Now you know why today's black youth 
youth is unbalanced Say hello to our future gang members Or corner drug dealers Listening to me, Mike Jones, and Jim Jones <laughs> Trying to figure out who's a better father figure And our streets is ruptured Black leaders crossed over Selling out our structures to development vipers And our black doctors and lawyers Moved out to greener pastures No more role models they left out with the Cosby season Making us fans and victims Of misguided elders Spewing the word nigga with lousy explanations Y'all are taking us back with Ving Rhames, Pulp Fiction, but you call me black exploitation. D Black. That was in LA. That was at the ABFF. So you get a, a sample of what's going on out there and what we'll be going to and what we see when we do it. All right. Again, bringing it back to the studio, we got three powerful, talented individuals here. I got to my right, Poetic Soul. What's up, Poetic? What's going on? I got the beautiful, sassy, sexy diva, Spanacia. Hello. And to my left, I got the cool, mellow Mundu. What's going on? Hey, welcome to D.O.S.O. What's going on? Good and day. welcome back, welcome back. Yes, sir. It's always good to have y'all. Thank you. So, Spanicia, I'm going to start it off with you. What's going on with you? What's popping with you these days? Uh, with me, I am doing a lot of traveling with spoken word. I am really putting my voice out there and expressing myself through my creativity. That's my gift for spoken word. I got a lot going on. Um, on the 7th, of February, Danimans at 8 o'clock on Edgewood, 489 Edgewood Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia. And Spanisi, I kind of feel kind of crazy talking to the back of your head, so I mean, I know I ain't that <laughs> ugly, so every now and then, it's okay to look at me. <laughs> I, pose a, I pose a question. Okay. And I want you to answer that question for me, Spanisi. Neo Soul, when you hear Neo Soul, you can either rap it, you can rhyme it, yeah. you can spoken word it, you can, however you want to do it. Give me a tidbit of, so that our viewing audience has some idea of what we're all about and how we, how we get down into the soul. Okay. Um, tonight, I am an artist. I am whomever I paint myself to be. The blueprint to my success isn't embedded on no canvas, though. It is instilled within my soul. And there are no imperfections when it comes to my artwork. Because while everyone else is sleeping, I am burning midnight oil, perfecting every square inch of my masterpiece, me, with my sweat and my tears. That was good. That was, y'all give her a hand. That was good. Well, she always do. You were down at the Apache. Um, I think I seen you down at the Apache performing down there. Yes, I was actually down there this past Sunday. They had mm -hmm. an unplugged set, but I'm at Apache, Mocha Mat, Grounds Coffee House, um, Java Monkey. Yeah. I'm everywhere. So. Awesome, awesome. And, and, and I've had the opportunity to hear you in a couple of those places. Mundu. What's going what on? What it is, bro? Chilling, chilling. How you? You got it, big man. <laughs> I'm gonna step around so you ain't talking to the back of my head. Okay, 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 okay. That's what you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Step back a little so, bit. So, so what it is with you right now? Um, with me, I'm I'm grinding, man. I'm I'm, I'm always grinding. Um, uh, right now I'm, I'm with the family. Right now we formed the family, which is officially guilty penmanship. Um, separately, myself, like I said, I'm everywhere. You can catch me at Mocha Match, the grounds, Apache, occasionally, on the street corner. I'm everywhere. <laughs> I mean, that's real. That's I'm everywhere. On the street corner. Now, what Would you be doing it? on the street corner? You selling <laughs> something or you, and what they call it, trapping? Nah, I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on the street selling my art for free. You know what I mean? Straight up and down. That's what it is. I'm selling, selling you, selling you, buying your time to see my art. That's Talk what Talk about is. your art. Talk about my art. I mean, uh, you saying art. Perfect example. Time after time, I conjure up visible metaphors, seeking the perfect poem. Standing in a crowded room filled with a thousand faces, yet still I feel alone, a captive of the zone. And all I see is a rainfall filled with pronouns, predicates, adjectives, and nouns, and plumbing and verbs that bounce when they hit the ground. 
And as absurd as that sounds, that's really how it goes down in open vein when I inject heady lines to elevate minds, or so it seems. But if you read in between, it'll all unfurl. See, I'm lyrically shaping this world, painting portraits passed off as poetic paragraphs as my mind twirls like that of a type ball and printing letter after letter, forming words, words forming sentences. Sentences what you hear right now, and what you hear right now is what I came up with last night when I tried to write that perfect poem. <laughs> They are ready. Now, see, I was like, I was just going to say, like, talk more about your art. Oh, well, you <laughs> know, I mean, I got, I got, jump, I just talk all day right about it. You know, I prefer to really show, I'm not really a talk about my art. Like, you see a lot of people, if you go to the venues, they like to talk first. I'm not really a talker, man. I'm like, let's let's go in it. You know, let's go in it. Awesome, Dude. awesome. I mean, but y'all treating this show like it's an audition, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you never know who's watching, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always live like that. I mean, that's that's why we are guilty penmanship. And guilty I like as charged. The guilty <laughs> penmanship. But I want to switch gears for a minute real quick. Poetic soul. Yes, sir. Poetic soul, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to pose a question. I'm going to pose a thought as a question. Okay. And I want you to entertain that briefly. Sure. If you could turn back the hands of time 10 years ago, what would you have done differently in your life and why? Wow, that's pretty profound. Uh, <clears throat> ten years ago, let's see, I was in the army at that time. Should I say it two years ago? <laughs> <laughs> I think um, there was a couple of things. I wish I, I would have worked a little bit harder at what I was doing. I was in the army at the time. I was really enjoying myself. I was seeing the world, and uh, I kind of got slack at it. So part of me wishes that I would have, you know, pursued that and see where it could go. You know, the thing about comedy, anything in the entertainment industry, even as actors, you know, what I'm saying, and I, and I act, you know. Yeah. And, and sometimes we have to conjure up feelings. Yeah. And we have to, in order to do that, we have to recapitulate on things in the past that may be hurtful. So true. You see what I'm saying? Like the death of a loved one or what have you. To conjure up those tears, that, that feeling, that to muster up that uh, that you need in order to become believable to your audience. Yeah. Right. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yes, sir. So with that having been said, Spinesia, share with us 10 years from now, how do you see your life? 10 years from now, I see in my life, my words moving people, because this is me, and all I want to do is show the people the real side of me and what my words mean to me, hoping that it will affect someone else and save their lives. So, so you're going to be a lifesaver. A candy lifesaver? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> with you. That was deep. And, and no, that's like, I'm surreal, because, like, yeah. my words, I do a lot of female empowerment things, too, and self-empowerment. I've never had that, you know, encouragement. So I feel like if I do that, that will save someone else if they like music, save mine. You know, that's what music did to me. Awesome. If it wasn't for that. So maybe my words can, you know, help someone else someday. Well, speaking of words, Poetic Soul is going to drop something on. And you ain't in the the clear yet, okay? I got a question for you, too. But for right now, Poetic, poetic, poetic Soul. That's me. Uh, we got a little piece that we like to do together. And, uh... You ready, Mondo? Oh, y'all gonna do oh, it yeah. together? Okay, okay. It's guilty okay, penmanship. So, oh, we are our family. Oh, oh. So this is guilty penmanship. penmanship. Yes, All sir. right. Can't taste but feel You can take it or leave it It's a lyrical 